What is up, YouTube? It's your boy, the Franchise Guy. Coming at you again with another episode of Madden 20 Jaguars Franchise Mode. Taking on the... Kansas City Chiefs? Yeah, Kansas City Chiefs. Just forgot what team, you know, Kansas City Chiefs played for. The something Chiefs. But just took a look at their X-Factors, you know. Uh, that X-Factor bazooka looks kind of scary right now. Could possibly be a super broken type... Uh, you know, super broken this game pretty much. Um, but I'm going to share with you guys that we're not going to be having full gameplay until at least the second season. Just because no one, no one wants to watch this team. Nobody wants to watch this team play. No one wants to watch this team lose. And I guarantee that that's exactly what's going to happen. This team's going to go out here. They're going to trot out. They're going to, you know, do their best. They're going to have, you know... Say you're going to try and have some fun, but guess what? They're going to lose, and they're going to lose miserably against this team. You know, Ross and Thurder, Thurber, Thurder, something like that, is their starting QB, leading the charge. If you guys don't know this, this team has zero captains on it. We do not have a single captain on this team. I mean, ownership, you know, the head coach, you know, went to Chance Bishop, and he's like, hey, we need to talk about captaincy. Who do you think is going to be captaincy? Because Chance Bishop's trying to be the next Jerry Jones. Hands down. He's trying to be the next Jerry Jones. He wants to be involved in everything. He wants... He doesn't want a yes man. That's not what he wants. Because if you get a yes man, you end up like the Cowboys. And no one wants to be like the Cowboys. The Cowboys haven't won anything relevant since the 90s. I mean, we're in 2020, almost. And they're trying to figure out how modern day analytics work. Do I actually think that? No, I'm pretty sure the Cowboys know how modern day analytics work. But... You know, start this game off down by seven. That was, you know, a quick down by seven two. You know, down by fourteen right now. I mean, you still have the entire second quarter to play, pretty much. Oh boy, that escalates super quickly. Jump to the third period, right? That third quarter. I keep thinking that we're playing hockey. We're not playing hockey. We're not playing hockey. Down thirty one in the third. Jeez, we are not doing too hot right now. Into the fourth now, down 38. Red zone alert. Sure, why not? Let's play this moment. Let's play some fourth quarter action. And that's going to be what the bulk of the gameplay is going to be. It's going to be fourth quarter action for this first season. We're going to get the off season and the draft involved. Then we're going to go back through, I guess, the preseason for next season. Just get a look at like the rookies and all. But who knows? <laughs> Who knows what we're gonna do for this team? This team is just, uh, this team is just something else. Not even a good something else, just a bad something else. You know, Shell right here gets the first down rushing. I think we took a delay of game penalty, so we got backed up. Third, you know, just throwing across his body right here. Oh, look at this! Somehow it's a touchdown. Ross and Thurber gets a passing touchdown. To the running back. Look at that. Just throws it over the defenseman. Look at that. Just catches it. I mean. Crozen? He's. I'm not sure how to say it. I think it's Dan Crozen. The running back. Just, you know. I think that's his first ever career receiving touchdown. So. He's having a great time. He's celebrating. I mean. He got his first receiving touchdown. Before he got his first you know, rushing touchdown. But. You know. Hey. Let's send this man up the middle right here. Gets the first down. Dan Crozen. 16 rushes, 44 yards. Not too bad. I mean, from the gameplay I've done so far, I mean, we're a couple weeks ahead of what's going out so far. Um, but so far, what I've seen so far, I mean, Crozen looks like a Peyton Hillis almost. Throwing an interception right here. That's not something we want to see. And what I mean by a Peyton Hillis as running back, I mean, he's not going to be a starting caliber running back. I mean, is he gonna? Can he be like an emergency pinch running back? Oh yeah, sure, he can definitely do that. But the way I use my running backs pretty much is I have three running backs who are in-game running backs. So I have a start my starting running back. I have like a backup to him, and then I have like a specialty running back almost, like a like a Darren Sproles or a Corey Clement, like one of those kind of guys. Just like a. A Swiss Army knife kind of guy, kind of guy that can throw like a chip block, kind of guy that can, uh, you know, run the ball, you know, kind of guy that can catch. It's just one of those guys right there. 
Uh, but then Dan Crozen can come in, pretty much be the, our fourth running back on the team. You know, 19, 19 rushes, 71 yards, not bad at all. Very respectable for him, very respectable for this team. The fumble right here, it's going to be turned over to the Kansas City Chiefs right now. Eesh. You know, Crozen wasn't in, and a fumble occurred. So that's coming to show you that we need Dan Crozen to have the ball in his hand that he is our running back of the future not really actually he's just gonna be he's gonna be something else but we're ended up losing this game right here and they actually like, review it i mean it doesn't matter dude it doesn't matter if he was down by contact if his knee was down we've lost this game you're not saving anything you're literally all you're gonna do is save one hail mary play it's probably gonna get picked off and taking it away for a pick six. I mean, this man looks, looks scary out there. But the uh, ruling on the field, they're going to touch each other. And you get the ball back. So, four seconds left in the game. I mean, what are we going to, what are we really going to do? We're just going to run up with Crozier. And, you know, get him some more rushing yards. 21 rushes, 77 yards for the running back. Not too bad at all. And then the game breaks, actually. We're assuming to the next key moment right here. Um, pro problem is, there is no more key moments. We're just going to sit here and spin entirely in limbo. So I'm pretty much going to have to... Re I just had to restart the game. Not restart the game. I had to exit the game, then restart it, then exit, but then sim to end to do to get actually get out of it because it just kept putting us in there so i had to sim to the end of I had to exit sim to end of game and yeah so the first game for this series did not start off too hot we ended up losing pretty bad um ross and thurber you know 163 yards touchdown two picks long of 24 sack three times 17 completions on 27 attempts 62 per completion percentage not not too bad actually very respectable completion percentage Crozen had, you know, a decent game. Rush Rochelle had a, you know, a fumble in the game, not greatest. Danny Etling was our leading receiver, 42 yards. Former QB right there. Trent Sieg, you know, eh, 26 yards, not the worst. I mean, Austin Duke, Max McCaffrey. Crozen got involved in the passing game a little bit too. Two for 13, a touchdown. Uh, Jamal Jones uh, blocking. Uh, oh, I don't need two sacks allowed. Chris Gonzalez and Austin Fleer. No one else actually allowed any sacks. Good for them. Defense was led by <clears throat> Thurston Armbruster. Huh. Did not think I'd have actually anyone with double digit uh, tackles. You know, uh, Josh Allen had tackle for loss. No sacks, unfortunately. Uh, McCray had two tackles for loss. You know. Uh, Cunningham with a tackle for loss right here. Marigos had two assisted tackles. And, uh, yeah. Speaking of Chris Marigos, I saw this stat pretty much. Chris Marigos pretty much led to Harbaugh being fired from the Niners. I was, I was looking at that. I was looking at uh, Collapse. But I forget what YouTube channel is right now. But it's going over the Niners Dynasty Collapse where it kind of just had, like, Alex Smith and Kaepernick and, you know, Willis and Navarro Bowman and all those guys, and a missed roughing the punter by Chris Marigos pretty much led to the downfall of Harbaugh with the Niners, and he went back to Michigan because of that. That and front the front office is a bunch of jerks, and they don't know how to run a football team, which seems to be very common actually in a lot of sports for whatever reason. I mean. How do you, how do you spend millions upon millions of dollars to um, run an organization? You pay people millions of dollars, and you don't know how to run it correctly. I mean, the Detroit Lions have are owned by not the Lions. The no, where's the Lions or Tigers? One of the big cats. They're they're owned by Ford, the Ford family, and they don't know how to run an organization. I mean, yeah, I think the New York Giants have they've been better, but they've run themselves into the ground. 
Bengals front ownership has no clue what they're doing. You know, they had Marvin Lewis as head coach for how many you know years? Was it like 15, 20 years, something like that? He was the head coach. Like it was just not, not a great thing. Pittsburgh Pirates. What's the right team? Pittsburgh Pirates. I mean, they're just oh, they're garbage. They have no clue what they're doing. You know, they had that one brief window where they made the playoffs for like two straight seasons after missing for twenty years, and they decided they wanted to you know re-sign their head coach. They wanted to bring back you know bad talent like friend. They're playing Francisco Liriano. How much money to pretty much not be used? I mean that team was built off of like hodgepodge players and did not work out one bit. And it was oh boy. It's not good times in a lot of cities for front ownership. I mean, it doesn't help that small market teams, though, are... They can't they can't fight the same fight they used to fight. You know, the Moneyball A's no longer can... Are no longer va- are, like, valuable. They're no longer something that they can do. Because now every team can do that. Every team, from the New York Yankees to the Boston Red Sox to the L.A. Dodgers... Are doing what the you know the Moneyball A's did. The L.A. Dodgers and the Houston Astros are the leading way in in doing that. You know they're realizing that they need to stock up on high caliber draft picks and use them for the future. You know trade away you know top talent for high caliber draft picks. No longer trading away top draft picks for one year rentals anymore. You know Giants trade away Zach Wheeler for. Carlos Beltran and Zach Wheeler is a top commodity. You know, he was a top commodity at the trade deadline, but, you know, the Mets botched it, and, you know, now they don't have anything for Zach Wheeler. Edwin Diaz, you know, hot commodity closing wise, you know, got finessed by the Mariners, and the Mets overpaid for him. You know, Marcus Stroman, a little iffy yet to say if the talent they've traded was more or less on par for what Sherman should have gotten, but who knows? 